Hi there, Andrew here. I love to be entertained, but I have no patience. So I give every new show I watch only one episode to hook me. Welcome to Debut Review. Today I will be watching the very first episode of Invincible! Now, years ago, I did a series of YouTube videos I called 30 Days of Comics, where every day I read the first arc or several issues of a comic series and talked about it. So, very similar to Debut Review, just for comics. Um, I read the first few issues of Invincible. I didn't really care for it, as I recall, but I could not recall specifically why I didn't care for it. So I went back and I watched my own video. It's really good. You should watch it. Um, and I went, oh, oh yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the problem I had. So uh, you can watch the video, but in a nutshell, the problem I had with the comic was that the characters didn't care about anything happening or anyone it was happening to. And that made it difficult for me as a reader to care about anything that was happening or anyone it was happening to. If your characters don't care, generally speaking, it's hard for me to. So, uh, hopefully the new animated Invincible series will remedy that element of the comic. So, Invincible! Invincible is an animated, I'm sorry, Invincible is an adult animated superhero series that revolves around 17-year-old Mark Grayson, who just like every other guy his age, except his father, I can't read. Mark Grayson, who's just like every other guy his age, except his father is the most powerful superhero on the... Now, I'm going to watch this on my PlayStation 4 Amazon Prime app. And so far as I can tell, there's no, the, the, the show description is cut off. As far as I can tell, there's no way to actually expand it on the PlayStation 4 app. Except his father is the most powerful superhero on the planet, Omni-Man. But, as Mark develops powers of his own, he discovers his father's legacy may not be as heroic as it seems. I wonder if there's an individual episode uh, description. Uh, there is. Okay, so Season 1, Episode 1. When Mark Grayson finally inherits powers from his superhero father, it's a dream come true. But there's more to being a hero than just choosing a... Sony, you might want to fix this app. Alright. Well... Um, hmm. Let's get the unimportant thing out of the way first. Animators. Um, fix the eye lines, please. It's really distracting that in almost every instance where a character is supposed to be looking at another character, it looks like they're staring off somewhere else. Rarely do your characters ever look like they're actually looking at what they're supposed to be looking at. I'm sure that's very difficult, but you're failing, so it's something to work on. Um, I like the fact that uh, this animated iteration of Invincible is not a panel-by-panel panel direct adaptation of the book makes it more interesting to watch. Um, that said, I still don't like it. 
Uh, my problem with the book, what I read of it, uh, was that none of the characters seemed to care about anything or anyone it was happening to. Um, and I go into more detail on that in the original uh, 30 Days of Comics review, so uh, that's linked in the description. I probably have a card somewhere for it, so check that out if you want. Uh, I, I, I didn't ha quite have that problem with this. No, the problem I had with the characters in the animated iteration was not that they didn't seem to care or were completely unaffected by everything or, and everyone around them, but none of them are likable. I mean, none of them are genuinely hateful or anything like that, but... Almost every character in this first episode is just kind of an unpleasant asshole. Um, the writing is not very good. Uh, the, the, I'm going to, I think, have difficulty articulating exactly what's wrong with this episode as a an immediate reaction to the episode. It's something I really need to think about and analyze so that I could organize my thoughts into something coherent to explain why I just don't think this is very well structured and paced. Um, I appreciate that the show gets to the goods quickly. Um, for example, our, uh, our main hero here, Mark, uh, the, the kid, he has a super-powered dad, and he's going to get his powers any day now, and oh, I can't wait till I have my powers, it's going to be so much fun being a superhero, and um, he gets them that night. Economy of storytelling, yes, but on the other hand, it's just, you don't get a sense of who this guy is without his powers. There's some of that, but in my humble yet inerrant opinion, not enough. We don't really get to know him or what he wants before he gets his powers. Because he gets them really, really early. And then he masters them, to an extent, just as fast. I mean, he's still kind of... He's still a little awkward in the air. Kind of sucks at landing, but... Um, he's out in a superhero suit almost immediately. And again, that's not necessarily a bad thing, because that doesn't seem to be the story that this show is telling. But it's not working for me. Um, when I say the characters are kind of unpleasant assholes, they all have moments where they almost are so mean or belligerent that they act out of character. Like... Um, uh, his mom says, hey, honey, come inside, you've got school tomorrow, and he says, make me. The hell did that come from? To her credit, the mom had a nice response to that. But she's, I liked the mom in the book, because her attitude towards superheroism was not that she didn't care, but that it just it was so routine to her that that conceit was pretty charming. There is a bit of that here, but she also just seems kind of aggressive and unpleasant. The father is the same way. He has a line where she's like, um, do you, how was the first day out? And he's like, oh, when he was training his son in the superhero biz. And he's like, ah, oh, could have gone better. She thinks, you think he might have pushed him a little hard? He goes, are you questioning me? It's like, the hell did that come from? And again, she has a pretty decent response to that, which was basically what I just said. The hell did that come from, dude? Um, so a lot of the characters, it just, 
I'm not connecting with any of these characters at all. Uh, the show, in the book, it opens, I think, with the kid watching TV. And it's like, oh, the Guardians of the Galaxy, or the, whatever the, the, the superhero group name is. They're fending off the White House from uh, an attack by some bad guys. That's complete... In this, it opens with that attack, so we get to know all the Guardians of the Galaxy. It's not the Guardians of the Galaxy. It's essentially the Justice League. I mean, it is completely a ripoff of the Justice League. There's a Superman. There's a, well, combo of uh, Wonder Woman and a Hawk Girl. There's a Martian Manhunter. Um, there's Batman... It doesn't feel like an homage. It doesn't feel like a parody. It just feels unimaginative. You know? It, it just feels like a ripoff. It feels like off-brand Justice League. Just make your own heroes, guys. Come on. On the other hand, that does allow you the shortcut of everyone understands the Flash, who's also there. Uh, everyone understands Superman and what their power sets are. So that gives you a bit of a shortcut. You don't have to actually explain this stuff. Uh, there's an Aquaman analog, who's literally a fish. Um, with, you know, arms and legs. Um, so it opens with the, the entire battle. So it introduces all the characters and the powers. And I'm sitting there thinking... It's an okay scene, but why are we spending... With my foreknowledge of the comic, I'm like, why are we spending time with these characters? Who cares? They're not important. The show ends with um, our lead character who takes on the superhero moniker, Invincible! That's the name of the show. Uh, fighting his first baddie. And the baddie says, Who are you? And he looks at him and he says, I, and then it cuts to title screen, Invincible. I, Invincible? I, Iron Man? You, Jane, me, Tarzan? Maybe I misheard it and he said, I'm, I hope I misheard it because I, Invincible! Uh, yeah, he, he had to wait for him to say M. because I am, boom, invincible. Roll credits. Yeah, I get what you're doing there, but if you just cut it after I, it's stupid. And then there's an after credit sequence with one of the Guardians of the Galaxy, the Flash analog, and it keeps going. And I grabbed my PS4 remote, and I hit the pause button, and there was ten minutes left. I'm like... What? So it's not a, like a mid-credits roll or extra spe- No, it's just they jammed the title card in like the last third of the show. It's weird. But this last sequence, and it goes, here's the flash. Oh, the, the, the Guardians of Galaxy alert. Gotta go. And it goes through every single character so you get to see them in their normal lives. And they, oh, there's, there's an alert. I gotta go. This is why they introduced them at first, so that when they kill them all off in an exceptionally gory manner, you're not going to care about any of them because you still don't know any of the characters. I mean, you know a little bit. Martian Manhunter is friends with a, a little street urchin, and that's adorable. One of them's a photographer. One of them's got a girlfriend. One of them runs a philanthropic... Charitable, charitable business kind of thing. But then they're all just utterly gorily slaughtered, which is out of step with everything we've seen in the show so far, which I don't have a problem with. That That's that third act twist. It's like, oh, oh, that's what this kind of show is. That's what this show is. Um, that's fine, because you're like, oh, damn. Oh, oh, we're going gory. I like gore. Okay, let's see. So, I may check out um, the second episode just because I didn't. If this happens in the comic, I didn't get that far. In fact, most of uh, the story in the comic that I read, which was about a 
someone kidnapping high school kids and then strapping bombs to them and leaving them in populated areas like malls so that they explode and take a bunch of people out with them. That whole whole thing, that's not in episode one. So this whole end sequence where the Guardians of the Galaxy are gorily slaughtered, that was... I don't know if that happens in the book. If it does, I didn't get that far. So I'm like, oh, well... As much as I just generally didn't enjoy the show, I don't think... The, the animation is fine. It's obviously not very high budget, but it's fine. Other than the eye lines. Um, the acting is adequate. The writing I don't think is very good. I don't care for the structure and pacing. If it weren't for that last scene, I almost certainly would not tune in for episode two. But I'm a gore hound. So if you're going to go gory, I might check out another episode just to see where this is going. But if in subsequent episodes I'm still not connecting with the characters, the gore and violence and action and stuff is not going to matter and it's probably going to ultimately bore me. So, um... So as a first episode, it's it, it it's a great hook for a certain type of viewer. But overall, as a story, as a narrative, I, I don't think it quite works. So, um, hopefully it all comes together in uh, episode two. Bye. <laughs>